All right, welcome back to Nick Lane's Comic Corner Classic Class Non Classics. This is episode number 20, 2846, double shot number 2740. Two more DC series to discuss here. First, we're discussing Green Lantern Volume 3 issues 9 to 17 and 19 to 29, along with the first three annuals of the series. Issues 9 and 12, 9 through 12 is a team up story of Guy Gardner and Gennart. Really fun little venture store for these two. The whole thing about competing who was the true, the one really answer on Earth. And this is not followed with a little while. And then right after this, we have the four parter Mosaic, which takes which is 13 to 17. By the way, we still have Jared Jones right here. Uh, this four part story arc. It's pretty much a backdoor pilot into the Green Lantern Mosaic ongoing series, also by Joe Jones as well. The whole thing is like, cities taken off Earth to this other planet, and then John Jones declared the Green Lantern of this planet. Yeah. So then, basically, like, 18 have discussed already as part of the Breakdowns crossover. You're thinking, okay, what about uh, Green Lantern issue 19? By the way, we do have another backdrop power here. That, that's coming. Don't worry, I'll, I'll discuss that. So 19 is basically a story about Alan Scott. Yep. He is pretty much the starring character of this book. He's a spirit, but basically it's all about him. It's written by Joe Jones, artwork by Joe Stanton, Mark Bright, Pat Broderick, and Martin. I think it was Pat Broderick the last issue he did for the book. Yes, but it was an excellent story here. Uh, issue number 20 begins a story known as Regeneration. We have this brand new character name Flicker who appears in the story arc here and well he's here for like a few issues basically from issues 20 to basically like 24 he does be here a little bit after this but we'll talk about it later but thanks to this issue here we debut two new characters for the Grelancer Corps and Amida And Bukuda. Yep. They both make a debut here. We also have a first appearance of Stone World and Sector 904. Uh, Bukuda, those not familiar with the character. Uh, this was a character who who basically... I think it was Jeff Johnson did this. Where... Actually, I think maybe Tomasi. Uh, one of the writers of the Green Lantern book decided to basically make a part of the Alpha Lantern Corps. Which is basically a uh, internal affairs... And they kind of bar partially converged into a, into a cyborg. Yes. Where she kind of merged with a lantern. Uh, and she was around for a little while. And then they practically killed her off in New 52. Yeah. And the whole thing of this book is like training new lanterns. Uh, 25 is a very interesting issue. Because 25, what this book is, it is literally a backdoor pilot to another spinoff book. Though this book actually lasts longer than Mosaic. Mosaic was 18 issues. We'll discuss Mosaic at some point. But this book will lead to a almost 50 issue title for Guy Gardner. Yep, he gets on spinoff book. Because he gets a fight with Hal Jordan being the sole Green Lantern of Earth. And he loses. And he gets his, he gets his ring taken away from him. And this leads to stuff related to his spinoff book, which happened right after this. Which, I love the Green, Green, the Guy Gardner title by Joe Jones. I think he did an excellent job with the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of the thing with uh, Issue 25. It's, like I said, back to pilot. Well, 
Well, actually, it's a guy going to reborn. Yeah, and the whole thing of him being punched in this issue. Yeah, that's a reference to the events of uh, Justin International. But great issue. Uh, issue number 26. It's like hint having in charge. Carol Ferris, basically, is back in the book. And the whole thing is like battling Evil Star for the next few issues. Yes. Also, uh, rest in peace, the artist in this book, Mark Bright, passed away just this year. Uh, great artist in this book. It's always amazing. Yeah, also Go Face here, too. Uh, the story itself with, with Evil Star gets wrapped up in issue 29. Yeah, that's what kind of... Actually, no, I got wrapped up in 28. Yeah, basically 29 had a return of the character Olivia Reynolds. From the previous five of the book. Yeah. Yeah, when she returned to the book, last time she appeared in this very book was actually in... This might surprise you. Green Lantern Volume 275, the issue that came out just before uh, Daniel O'Neill took over the writing news of this book. Yes. Because that was released in 1970. And this issue here, issue 29... That was released in 1992. 22 years later. I'm like, wow. Oh yeah, and also the issue itself is sort of a uh, reference to New Adam's book, which I do appreciate the fact they've made reference to it. Yeah. But excellent issues. I think these issues are absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And yes, yeah, so I'm discussing more issues, but now I'll talk about the first three annuals of the series. Uh, first of which is A number one, of which is The Darkness Within. Uh, it's basically Eclipso. Yes, where in the books, uh, Carol Ferris becomes Star Sapphire and becomes possessed by Eclipso. Yep. Bill Willingham did this cover. Yes, uh, let me show the cover here. You think, wait, Bill Wilhelm? As in the writer of Fables, he did the cover? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's his cover right there. Mm -hmm. It's a really fun annual. I, I love the Eclipse of stuff here. Uh, and number two... It's a Bloodlines tie-in. Yep. Debuts the character Nightblade. Where... This is kind of basically where, like... Oh, it's... It's Bloodlines. The storyline where it has... Debuts these brand spanking new characters. Who DC, a lot of them did do not... Did jack freaking squat with them. Yes. The new character debut in this, this this issue here is Nightblade. You might be thinking, oh yeah, the whole thing with him is that he can chop up his arm like, like Knockout Boy. Yeah. What happened to him after this book? Well, he appeared in Black in Blood Pack. And popped the couple of Guy Gardner. In a way, he did practically nothing. No, seriously, he did practically nothing after this. He did jack freaking squat. Uh, and then we'll move on to the third and discuss here. Yes, uh, surprisingly, this annual was not written by Gerald Jones. Oh, no, this is written by uh, David DeRose with Dean Zachary in the artwork. Uh, mostly put, it's what if they actually had, get this... John Stewart, um, they had the main human lanterns, John Stewart, Hal Jordan, exist in the era of World War II, and John, and basically had to live in Nazi Germany. Yes, where Hal Jordan is a Nazi in this book. And also, John Stewart has a romantic relationship with Carol Ferris, despite the fact that she's dating, um, Hal Jordan. I think it's reality that she was actually married to him. 
Yeah, Hal Jordan in this book is a complete dick. Oh yeah, and here's the thing though about this book. They have this uh, character called Warlord. You're thinking, oh, is it, um, is it Mike Grohl's um, Morgan and Trevor? Nope. It's Oliver Queen. Yep, Green Arrow's Warlord in this book. Yeah, and also Guy Gardner's a Nazi too. You're thinking, what? Yes. Woe to the Ring of Evil. That's the whole thing with this universe. It's like, what if basically everybody was evil? Except for Jon Stewart. He's the who's not evil. Yeah, and Hal Drink is killed off in this book. Yeah, he briefly becomes Green Lantern in this book, which is awesome. He, well, at one point he was uh, Green Lantern. It's a one-shot annual, but really a lot of fun. It's a good Elseworlds story. It's a shame that basically Green Lantern doesn't have an Elseworlds trade because they did it for Superman, they did for Batman, Justice League, but not Green Lantern. I don't know why. It's weird. Of three annuals, I give uh, Animal 1 a 9 out of 10. 2, I'm going to give that a 8. Uh, and 3, I'm give it a 9. Alright? Good stuff here. Uh, next up we have is a very interesting book here. We have a book that, as far as I can tell, is not in trade. It's the third volume for Supergirl, because I've already discussed Volume 2 already. It's Volume 2 by Roger Stern. Yep. Which is basically, the book itself feels like something that you they would see explored in the, it's like, the, the best way to describe this book, yeah, it's basically a miniseries for Supergirl, obviously, where she's like living in her hometown, Midville, Yeah, and at one point in the book, something weird happens, I'll get to say. Actually, living in Smallville. And basically, Roger Stern is trying to recreate some of what happened in the Silver Age. At one point, like, they had it where, in the reveal at the end of the first issue, that, oh, Lex has been cloning Supergirl. And then, like, halfway through the series, like, toward the end of, like, issue three... She, for some reason, puts on her outfit that first appeared in that stuff for Lady Teen Titans. Well, New Titans, anyways. And then it gets resolved by the end of the miniseries. But it's not a bad book, per se. It's good. Uh, I do enjoy it. It definitely feels like a Supergirl book. Uh, but the best way you can always also describe it, it's planting seeds for her solo ongoing series, which we launched long after this. Yeah, by the way, this book was all released in the year of 1994. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't realize there was a special this book, but I'll discuss it in some more fun. But yeah, in case you're curious, though, uh, Volume 4 was actually launched two years later. But an excellent book. I loved this book. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think, like, one of the issues was basically referencing, um, I think it was issue three, I think it was, where he was referencing, like, a, a story arc, I think it was, for Supergirl, actually Superman. But, yeah, great book. Mm hmm So, yeah. Uh, by the way, June Bergerman does the artwork of this book. Yep. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the view. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications, and do the dislike button. Uh, so stay tuned for tomorrow for my reviews for uh, hopefully Fairy Tension Gokaiger, um, Fairy Tension Quest, and our last Crusade of the Rise, which I will have an announcement for that one. And it's a very shocking announcement. No, I'm not ending the review series. I'm not dropping it per se. It's some related to the series I'm not very happy with. But you'll find out tomorrow. Okay, next video. Bye.